Well, thank you. Welcome to John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. I'll tell you what, folks, I'm on vacation. I'm going fishing. This is phenomenal. Massive Flavosaurus Big Butt Hey guys, I got 11 pounds. Look at that thing, man. Oh, no. Look at the tummy on that thing. That's a toad. I might need the frable. I might need the frable for this one. We've been watching this one. Look at the size. Oh, my God. Yeah, give me the frable. Give me the frable. Well, here, you're going to have to do You're going to have to flip in. We don't have the net ready, so can you do it? I'm going to try. Oh, my Lord. Look at the size of that Flavosaurus Massive Rex. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Dude, Look at that. that is that might be one of the that is it the biggest is. bluegill I've ever it's, seen it's alive. Giant. Yes, folks, that was us catching big bluegills on Lake Havasu when we were on vacation last April. This April we're back in Phoenix again and and Andy, this is really one of our favorite trips of the year. It's our fishing vacation. Absolutely, it's a fantastic trip. Now, Ron, instead of the big bluegills this year. We're going for big bass, yeah. huh? We're going for some trophy bass. You guys are here at Saguaro Lake, Arizona, and this is actually one of the top 100 bass lakes in the United States. Now, Andy wants a big bass today, so tell the folks, how big can they get here? Well, our state record here is just a shy under 17 pounds, but, you know, it's not uncommon to catch 12, 13, and 14 pound bass out of this lake. Um, you know, we're right now in all three phases of the spawn, and I'm hoping we'll boat at least one over eight pounds, if not multiples. Great you opportunity. Excited? Very excited. I am too. Hey folks, we'll show what we're using and how we're using it. All of that coming up right after this. The future of boating is here. Now get all the efficient performance of an Evinrude E-Tech G2 in the new 150, 175, and 200 horsepower. Fuel economy is everything. I was really shocked how fuel efficient it is. Anywhere from 40 to 50 miles further on a tank of fuel. All day on the water. I told my wife, I said, you know, I can't think of the last time I filled up. It's more money in the bank for me. The best-in-class fuel economy of the Evinrude E-Tech G2 is now available from 150 to 300 horsepower. To learn more, visit Evinrude.com. You have a choice, turf or surf. It's fishing season. Welcome to the outdoors. We're baiting, casting, drifting, and limiting out. The outdoors never felt so good. Catch, release, and keepers. The outdoors never tasted so good. It's fishing season. We are outdoors. Mills Fleet Farm. Hey folks, Yamaha and Mills Fleet Farm have teamed up to give away a brand new Kodiak 700. The Kodiak 700 is an awesome machine with an unbeatable mix of performance, workability, and real world value. Starting at only $69.99. Folks, there's three ways to enter. You can enter at any Mills Fleet Farm, you can enter online at gillespiefishing.com, or you can text to enter at 797979. You can win the Kodiak 700 with its class-leading power and durability, and by the way, it's assembled right here in the USA. Hey, welcome back, folks. As I mentioned at the top of the program, we're vacation bass fishing on Lake Saguaro, which I guess is just east of Phoenix or north? Yeah, it's just east. It's uh, outside of Mesa, Arizona. Now you guide out here all winter long and, and you meet a lot of folks from the Midwest. My you? gosh, a lot of Wisconsin, Minnesota, a lot of Canadians, they love it out here. Now today we're gonna to be bass fishing in relatively shallow water and, and, and you can't go wrong with, with, with one of these wackos. You can't, uh, you know, when you come up over the grass, there isn't a better uh, bait you can use, you know, than a wacko. One, it's weedless, two, it falls down in that strike zone long, long enough for these fish to see it. It looks like an injured bait fish. They'll come on over and uh, man, it's awesome. They just grab it and go and usually that produces some pretty big fish. So I'm expecting you to get a good one today. Oh, there we go, our first fish of the day. Here we go, you know, hey, let's see how you pro guys do the flip in. There you go. What do you think of that? That's cool, man. And that's a small fish, right? Yeah, this is a small one out here. I mean, this is, uh, this would be a male out here. You know, our big ones are uh, usually five, six to 10 pounds. Really pretty colors too. Yeah, these think. are a Florida strain too. Are they Even really? Even in Arizona, these are a Florida strain. So very aggressive, nice and chunky fish. Hey Andy Wendrock, way to go there, buddy. Let's see, we got, boy, this is just fantastic fun fishing, folks. Look at that bass. And this water, oh, that's a nice one, Andy. Way to go, pal. Nice. Nothing real big. Turn around, Andy. We got to see you, buddy. There we go. There's a nice fish. You spray that with bait mate, pal? I just sprayed it earlier. Yeah, 
Those are small fish though, aren't they, Ron? Those are males? Yeah, these are the males. Uh, we're gonna run into a lot of these. They're usually the, the uh, ones that move up shallow. They guard the fry and make the nests. And you know, sooner or later, we're gonna bump into one of these giant females. Ooh, another one up there in the front of the yeah. boat. Let's see, here he comes. Do a little boat flip action in here. Now we're in, uh, we're in the middle of April right now, Ron. Is, is this the prime time to come here? You know, anytime uh, right after February, the end of February, 1st of March, um, you know, is probably start or the beginning of the spawning period, which gives you a great opportunity all the way from the end of February, all the way up clear into almost June. And uh, the great thing about Arizona is our fish here, unlike the Midwest, don't all spawn at once. So it happens in waves, it can go several months. And right now we're sitting here where we have fish in all three stages of the spawn. So it kind of opens up the playbook, gives you a good uh, opportunity to catch them in a lot of different ways as we're gonna do today. Hey, 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 we're on the hot spot here, Ronnie. Yeah, once in a while you'll find a nice little stretch with a bunch of fish on it. I think it's a, uh, again, he is. it's gonna be another uh, little male. You know, we're having, a, we're having a slow on down with some finesse fishing, which is pretty typical on this lake out here. You know, the drop shot has always been really popular out west, and um, it does extremely well under tough conditions. Oh, there he is. He's not bad. Not a bad one. And again, those are males, folks. They definitely pull really hard. One thing I love about these fish is they're lean and they're mean, you know? Yeah. But uh, not a bad little male, you no, know. No, 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 nice not fish. at all. Yeah, you know, well, you'll sometimes come out here and catch a, you know, a couple dozen of these, and every once in a while you'll get in between, you'll you'll get that nice thump and and pop that five to ten pounder, you know. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, they're fun, aren't they? Oh man, they are. They pull so hard, you know. When you first set the hook on these, they, you think you got like maybe a 10, 11 inch, or they run right at the boat and. Yeah. And then they really start to pull, but uh, it's not not a real bad fish at all, actually. Oh, no, that's a nice bass. You know, this is... Uh, Don't you bro guys just flip them in? Yeah, we do. I got some really light line on here right now, but uh, that's a respectable little fish out here. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to complain anytime I can get a rod bend. Hey, Ronnie, we got ourselves a... A little, looks like a little male. You know, the wind picked up a little bit, and you know, you've had three bites in the last five minutes, and... Um, now those calm days are tough here in Arizona, aren't they? You know, I tend to find that calm days around the country are tough. You know, you really need to have a little bit of a breeze, and we've had a just dead calm day. It's nice for sitting around the lake maybe and cruising and enjoying some time with the family, but when it comes to fishing, you really want that water circulating, get the bait fish and the plankton moving around. It really gets the whole the whole cycle going. But um, that one there just ended up slamming a jig, mix, mixed it up a little bit, something a little bulky, and. Uh, we'll see if we can't get something going and build upon it. Billy Billy Morgan, all right, we switched partners today. Today we have Bill Morgan from Johnsonville in our boat. Bill's got a nice one. And he was the guy that was tough no. yesterday, folks. Oh boy, oh, we it's got a, a good one. one on here. You're gonna need the Frable? Yes, I'll please. get the Frable, I'll get the Frable. Oh, that's a dandy, Bill. That is a big fish, Billy Morgan. Get him, get, oh, Bill, that's a giant. Bill, get him to that Frable. Bill, got to get him to that frable, Bill. Got him. Whoa. Drag is coming. He's fighting. Whoa, oh, One more, Bill. one more. He's, he's fighting. Just take your time. Holy cow. Here he is. There we go. We got yeah. him. Oh, good dude. Hey, hey, hey. You know, you'll recognize Bill Morgan from Johnsonville. He caught all the big fish in Canada Hold last your fish fall. up, Billy. Hold that baby up. No, we got Bill. Wow. That's a f six pounder, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good five and a half five pound and a half, fish. Six. Nice fish. Right. He hit that baby hard. Now tell the folks what you were doing. I was drop shotting for the first time. It's a new technique that I was uh, being taught by Ron here. And uh, boy, he hit that thing hard. Hold him out. I mean, that's a beautiful fish. Yeah, it is. And you know, when we were talking yesterday, Bill, you actually have a legitimate shot at a 10 pounder on this Oh, lake, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. That fight, boy, did that fish. Oh, he hit this thing hard. Yeah, he that, hit it hard, or she hit it hard. And is that uh, a spawned out female? No, this one here is a pre-spawn. This is okay. a pre-spawn, okay. Yeah, that's a, that one, she hit the boy, that hit it hard. I was worried you weren't gonna get him in that frable. Uh, well, <laughs> it was pulling a lot of drag. Nice, uh, nice, nice yeah, fish. Nice fish. Hey, wanted to ask you real quick, uh, you know, we have the new chicken products out now. What are those called? Oh, uh, flame grilled chicken. They're fabulous. Two minutes in the microwave, pre-grilled, pre-seasoned, pre-marinated. Microwave, they're fabulous. I love them. Teriyaki we have, salt and pepper, and they're uh, great flavors. Urban garlic. But uh, yeah, 40 seconds you got dinner. Yeah. Now you're not gonna eat that, so you're yeah, gonna throw that I'm one back, right? I'm gonna kiss them and send them back. All right, good job there, buddy. 
Folks, this is the bait that Bill just caught that last big bass on. You can see it's a drop shot. The hook is up here, a little leader material down here, and the weight down here. So you cast out, let it go to the bottom, and uh, your worm is sitting that far off the bottom, and you just jiggle and pull and jiggle and pull. Now, Ron, the key too, I see you're using a lot of bait meat. Why is that? Well, I like the bait meat formulation because it, for one, masks any human smell, and most importantly, when a fish goes out long and grabs a, a, for example, a drop shot worm like we're using today or anything for that matter that's in the water. As they come close, bass are very inquisitive. A lot of times we're throwing things that don't obviously always replicate what's in the water. But when they swim over, they start picking up those particulates. They, they are convinced it's real, it's alive, and they grab a hold of it. And you know, John, one of the biggest things, when a fish feels you before you feel it, what does it do? It wants to spit out the hook. Now they grab a hold of the bait, they hang onto it longer, which obviously uh, is going to put more fish in the boat for you. We were fishing the lakes of Phoenix, Arizona. A three hour flight from Milwaukee, a three hour flight from Chicago, and three hours from Minneapolis. Folks, there is nothing more frustrating than a rust laden strap for your ATV or your boat. But Amsoil has the answer, right, Len? It's, it's MP. I do. MP will take care of you. Once they're all rusted out like this from traveling on the highway, you just put a little MP in the strap and it'll take care of it no problem. That should free it up easy. Okay, now after the MP treatment, I couldn't get this strap out before. Let's see what happens. That's Pulls right yeah, out. Yeah, that's incredible. And also now, look at how easy that ratchet's in. Awesome. And for more information, all you need to do is check out amsoil.com. The new Acme Rattle Master has a built-in echo chamber with a brass rattle that calls fish in. The body's solid brass, too, and won't bend or dull, and reflects fish attracting light all over the water column. This one-two punch of sight and sound means you make less casts, because the fish come to you. Rip it or shake it for crappie, walleye, northern salmon, or trout, and experience multi-species action with just one bait. Folks, when I head out to fish, I always stock up on my favorite Baitmate fish attractants. Dale, I just put that Baitmate on, man. Baitmate offers a complete line of fish attractants and convenient spray bottles for every angler and every species of fish. They've got your bait covered. I also have the newest Baitmate delivery system in my boat, Baitmate Ultra Live Game Fish Dip. Simply flip open the lid and dip your bait for even application every time, and it's ideal for frequent cast. I, I just dipped that in the bait mate, you know that? Improve your chances of catching fish with bait mate fish attractants. It just makes sense. Taking a little break in the fishing, what I really want to talk about, Ron, is, is the geographic area that we're in. We're actually about 20 miles east of Phoenix, and, and maybe you can describe this. This is mountain and desert? Yes, yeah, part of the Sonoran Desert, but this is called the Tano National Forest. And obviously the forest is a little different than, than uh, obviously what you would assume is a forest, but you can come 20, 25 miles just east of Phoenix. You're out in the middle of nowhere, as you can see, there's not a dock, not a house, there's, there's nothing out here. It's God's country. You're gonna see, uh, you know, you have the cactuses, and just beautiful scenery. I want to mention too, this is not the only lake. There's a series of lakes in the mountains here? Yes, we are on the bottom of a series of four lakes called the Salt River Chain. And up behind uh, your left shoulder is four peaks and Roosevelt Lake is one of the largest lakes. And that's kind of the top lake and it dumps down from there into Apache, which is a great for smallmouth right. and, uh, and largemouth, then down into Canyon Lake and then down into this lake. And you also have stri some striper fishing here, some crappie fishing and some bluegill fishing. Yeah, stripers in a different lake, but you know, you uh, can come to Arizona, you, can, you can actually catch walleye here, which uh, shocks a lot of yeah, people. Right. But uh, the smallmouth, the largemouth is what we're really known for. We've got some of the top bass lakes in the whole United States here, which really shocks a lot of uh, our tourists and, and uh, winter visitors. I got a big fish on. It's I got a, a big giant, fish on, giant, man. John. It's Finally a got a bite on that, that rod down. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh, this is a giant. Folks, this is a giant fish. Rod this down. is a giant fish. I know how to play him. Oh, I know how to play him. Look at this. Oh my here. gosh, he's just a giant. He is just a giant. Giant folks. Oh, please don't lose him, Ron. We can't lose this fish, buddy. <laughs> I can't lose oh him. Oh my Look at gosh. Him. He's gonna jump. It's oh a, my gosh. It's a 10 pounder. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, okay. Keep a line on. Keep a tight line on. Ronnie, here he comes, Ron. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, he's, he took another run on me. Oh my gosh. He's coming. Oh my gosh. Back over this way. I, I'm doing oh. this. I'm doing it. Okay, okay. Doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. Okay, here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes, Ronnie. Ronnie, I, I, oh, I, I, whoa, look at that. Over here. 
Holy moly! Oh my God! Oh my gosh! Look at this, John! <laughs> Look at the size of that Wait, thing. what do you think? What do you think, buddy? What do you think? Oh, what? Hold yeah, your okay. fish big up. Fish, my friend. That is an absolute slobosaurus, oh as you would say. John? Oh my gosh. Ronnie, come on up here, buddy. I will, We got to talk yeah. about this. All right. Is that 11 pounds? Uh, we're going to put it on the scale, John. Oh, I'm going to guess that a good one. 9, 10 pounder. Holy cow. Look she at that. She is beautiful. What'd she hit, John? A uh, wacko. She hit the old wacko. Now, Kalen's wacko. And uh, using, what was that jig head they make? They make a, it's a 1 16th weighted jig head. Yeah. And uh, you threw that out there, she sat, I'm going to guess you landed really close to a cruising fish. And wow, what a beauty. Um, I think that is. Uh, I, I, that, is that your new personal vest? That's probably the best bass I've ever caught in my entire life. Man. Right there, man. I'm, I'm so shaking. Happy. You know, and I have to tell you, you got to be honest. I mean, it has been some tough fishing for us today, hasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, right. I but mean, uh, it, it, this is exactly why you had come down When I set the hook on that, that fish and I saw the first turn, and he jumped how many times? Two, three times? Two or three times. You had me nervous, man. I was oh, like, no, oh, no, man, no, that no, big no. jump. It was I, beauty. I, 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 I oh. do play a lot oh, of big I know. fish, but I mean, that right there, folks, is a mama jumba, super saurus, whatever, you know? I'm worried, I'm speechless. I, I am too. But I'm definitely, so happy for definitely you. Definitely Slavosaurus, massive Rex category. And Ryan, the photographer, was on your case a little bit, wasn't he? He said, fish and slow. Fish and slow. But you showed Ryan, didn't you? No, oh, you, you sure Ryan. did. Look at that, folks. Okay, we got our still pictures now, Ron, so I'm just going to let her go. Let's swim another day. And she's going to come too. There she goes. See you later, pal. And what a you, beautiful fish. And, and God, what a great job. Talk a little bit about the catch and release, how important it is. You know, it's it's so important, especially you know, <laughs> if you want to come out and catch big fish like this. Uh, one thing you have to remember is in the springtime, these big fish, they're coming up to spawn. We want to keep those fish in here to keep this fishery healthy and opportunities like that. So if you do catch a big one, do as you just did. Bring it in. Hey, get a couple quick photos and get her back in there so she's not stressed. And out. if you want to do those mounts, what are they called? Uh, Replicas. Replicas. Replica. You can do a replica. But man, I got video of that fish. That I'll, I'll, I'll remember that the rest of my I'm life. I'm so proud. I'm Thanks, so happy. Buddy. Folks, that big bass was caught, as we said before, on a Kalen's Wacko. But what's interesting, when you're fishing around weeds like we are, normally I'll just use just a regular old bass hook, but when you're fishing around weeds, Kalen's makes this weedless jig head. And Ron, that's not only nice for around weeds, but that's also really nice when you're fishing uh, 8 to 10 to 12 feet of water, getting that, that thing down. Absolutely. You know, that, that, that bait really quivers really nice like an injured bait fish. And when you do have 10, 12, I've even caught them as deep as 60 feet with suspended fish. Uh -huh. Helps you get that bait down in the strike zone a lot faster. And it's and it's weedless, and uh, you can work this heavy cover like that. And that fish was not on a bed. That was a cruiser. As a cruising fish, right through weeds. We're in about four to eight feet of water, a lot of emergent spring vegetation. These fish are coming up out of the deep, and you intercepted a big one in a Pound big them. way. Yeah. Oh, I got another one. I got another one on. Oh, here it comes. It's not as big as the last one I got, but it's a nice fish. Oh my, look at that, folks. Look at that rod bending, man. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. And that looks like a midget. No, I'm just <laughs> Compared kidding. to the other one. <laughs> I mean, that's a nice bass, but uh, that is a midget. Cool. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's kind of typical out here, you know. And some places that'd be a real good fish. I mean, it is a good fish, but that is a nice nice fish. Oh, you got him on the whack. Yeah, you know what it really, and that's something that we should talk about. Normally, this lake, and again, this lake is called Saguaro. It's called Saguaro Lake. Um, normally, this lake is a red-hot, wacky worm lake. But the last two days, it just it hasn't been good. All of a sudden, it's turning on. Almost up. about a week. And uh, all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, you, you just popped that that really big eight eight and a half pounder and uh it looks like you're onto something again it can it can pick up as fast as it shuts really out. really pretty colored fish hey folks it's time now to announce this week's winners of the mills fleet farm john gillespie's waters and woods 2017 fishing contest jason Rowe of cedar grove caught this 35 inch brown trout on lake michigan on a spawn sack Aaron Modell of Waterloo, Wisconsin, caught this 40-inch northern on Lake Mendota on a minnow. Andrew Zwig of Fitchburg, Wisconsin, iced this 23-inch bass on Rock Lake on a minnow. Bill Hagee of Merrill, Wisconsin, caught this 11-inch bluegill on White Eye Lake on a waxworm. And this week's kids winners are Aiden Ness of Valley City, North Dakota, caught this 30-inch walleye on Twin Lake on a minnow. And Luke Kokat of Burlington caught this 40-inch northern in Sturgeon Bay on a smelt. 
Our adult winners will receive a $25 Mills Fleet Farm gift card. Our kids winners of Plano Tackle Box. To enter is simple. Just stop in at your favorite Mills Fleet Farm store to pick up an entry blank or go to fleetfarm.com to download an entry blank. Remember folks, we have everything you need for the fishing opener, including fishing licenses. Mills Fleet Farm is your fishing gear headquarters. I wasn't happy with the layout, the setup, the performance of the other boats that were out there. Each boat has its own little good thing and its own little bad thing. I tried to meld all of that together to make a boat that was as good as can be to satisfy everyone. We feel that Recon's better than other boats for performance, whole shot. Every boat is a custom order built specifically for the customer. Recon is priced typically much lower than the competitors and still keep the quality there and the performance there. I like to see the finished product, see it leave on a trailer ready for the water. The overall satisfaction of, of building a vehicle, building something people can enjoy, get out and fish in. Whoever coined the phrase, less is more, wasn't much of a fisherman. He probably talked himself into a V6 when he could have got a V8, settled for 100 horsepower instead of 250, and went home empty handed when he should have doubled down. Introducing the Solix series. From mega imaging to auto chart live to cross touch, Solix has all of fishing's most innovative technologies on our biggest screen ever. Because more is more. Only from Humminbird. Folks, I'll tell you what, when we're on a fishing trip, we make sure we have Johnsonville's along. And you know, Andy, out here in Phoenix, Johnsonville's are extremely popular. What do we have tonight? We've got the hot Italians, one of my favorites. Now, how do you cook these when you cook them at home? You know, the key is low and slow. Low heat, cook them slow, turn them frequently, and they'll be perfect every time. So you don't want to puncture those skins? No, absolutely not. You get too much flaming and the outside will burn. If you do it low and slow, they're absolutely perfect. Our Johnsonville Italians, by the way, folks, are fantastic. We have the mild and the hot, but I'll tell you what, I love the hot. Mm-hmm. Aren't those best. great? Really, seriously, folks, when you're fishing, when you're tailgating, there's nothing like a Johnsonville, but the hot Italians. My favorite? My favorite. Hey, 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 there we go. We got a little breeze out here. Ron, look at the camera and smile. You know, you're having fun up there, pal. <laughs> yeah, man, having uh, a good here time. Here it comes. Uh, through that wacko on out there, I think the bite is picking up. Oh, John. there we go. You can do the bat. How's that Bass Pro flip in do? Yeah, it's good. You know, it's a little bit, uh, I'll get it. A little bit more difficult sometimes to get on uh, the old spinning there gear, but go. look at that. Not bad. Right there. You know, that is interesting though, buddy. We couldn't buy a fish on a wacko before. <laughs> no, this this wacko bite is actually, you know, it was on fire. It died off for a good week or so. And uh, I mean, you really did, man. You fired it up with that big girl and uh, now we're starting to catch some more, so. This is so cool when we get get back into these coves, Ron. Let's see what you got coming in. Oh, that's not too bad, buddy. No, no. Uh, what, you need the frable, buddy? You need the, oh, that's a nice bass. Nice bass. Yeah, you need the frable? No, I'll get down and grab it. All right. Need the old. Oh, yeah. You suck there in. you go, pal. Now that's about a, the average Jeez. size, right? Yeah, this is a nice fish. What was that on the wacko? Yeah, the wacko. Look how she choked that one down. Can that you take a look at that? That is cool, buddy. Right yeah, down she in just there. Ripped it. Um, I actually flipped this right along the edge. You know, as we get, uh, as the day gets going on, the sunlight's high, and you and I are flipping these wackos right along the edge of these tulies, and they're in that shade pockets, John. And uh, I let it just settle down and just felt the tick on the line. Well, you know what's so cool on this Saguaro Lake is you got little coves like this yeah, that you absolutely. get back in, man, and everything looks so bassy too, doesn't it? It's I a mean, beautiful lake. Really, when you look at it, you think there's a fish on every single cast, and there are days where they definitely are. What do you got, Ronnie? What do you got, buddy? Well, get got that frame, Bill. Get the net, buddy. Get the net. One. Is it a good one, Bill? Nice is it fish. A good one? Nice fish. All right, man. That Taking is awesome. a little awesome. bit of drag. Oh, here he comes. This is a nice uh, fish. Not a bad fish. No, not that's a, nice a beauty. Nice bassaroo there. Good job there, Ronnie. That is beautiful. It's a nice looking fish, aren't they? They're nice, healthy. Uh, this one here might actually even be a female, a little female that spawned out, or just a nice little size male, but they're really pretty in color, aren't they, John? Ronnie, yes, Ronnie, sir. that's three casts in a row, buddy. Uh, I'm telling you, it's a good one, not a bad one. No, you're gonna need the net? No, I don't think so. Oh, geez. You know, this wind has picked up, and uh, we're on making one pass here, and that's all we needed, because it's been pretty dead calm for a while, John. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that's made a big difference, buddy. They are just strong fish, though, all, all around. 
Another male, huh? Oh, oh look at there. boy, that's a nice bass nice right bass. there, Ron. Good job, buddy. Thanks, John. And you know, seriously, how the day has changed. Went from drop shot to wacky worm and back to drop shot. Back to drop shot. And that's pretty common out here. You know, if somebody wants to come on out to our lakes, you can really keep things simple. The drop shot is a very popular technique, works from coast to coast, you know, and uh, it catches, just flat out catches fish. And uh, you put any kind of finesse worm, small swim bait on here, and you can really cover water in a hurry and find these fish. Good fish. For more information on fishing the lakes of Arizona, call the Arizona Fishing Guides. That phone number is 480-772-8460. 772-8460. If you fish, chances are you've used a must-add hook. That's all we use. Come on, get him in there. Army tank there, Dale. Oh, there is the big boy. I mean, I just can't believe this, folks. Oh, let's see him, yeah. buddy. Look at that. <laughs> that 10 seconds, though, makes a big difference, buddy. Well, that one is a gorgeous fish. Is that pushing three? That's three. We're going to weigh it. Must have the world's largest manufacturer of fishing hooks. Get the point? We did. Tired of bugs wrecking your outdoor fun? Get a quick set screen tent from Clam Outdoors for shade and bug free enjoyment. The 45 second setup means no poles to insert. It's fully assembled right out of the box. Unfold and pop up this durable shelter with high ceilings and room for a picnic table. Available in five models. Quick set is perfect for backyards, camping, or all day sporting events with the whole team. Find your quick set by Clam online or at a supporting retailer near you. Hand me the frame there, Nathan. All right, buddy. Now, is this a critical part of the fight here? Yeah, it Get that frame out there. Get that frame out there. Look at that walleye. Look at that walleye. Dave, Dave, holy moly, moly. Look at that, Folks, Johnny. that is gorgeous. That is a big fish and a big old frame. And this is a real nice one, man. Look at that muscle lunge. Yes, in the frame. That is gorgeous. I wish he had a bigger frame, man. There we got him. Oh, my gosh. Look at that fish, Dale. John, oh my look gosh, that. look at that bass. So last year we caught the big bluegills. This year I caught my personal best largemouth. Good trip. Of, I'm proud of you, man. Thanks. I, am too. I always always a great time hanging with you. I'm glad to have you. And out. always as the deal goes, when Ron comes back to Wisconsin, I take you fishing. You do, and you do a pretty good job putting me on fish. All right, thanks, buddy. And folks, that is our show for today. Please join us next week. I don't know we're gonna fish yet. We'll find a place somewhere. Until then, I'm John Gillespie, hoping to see you enjoying John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. Hey, hey, dollar day! Hey, 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 John Gillespie! Treat for